excited that we had in like a symmetrical low RG ball to okay. complement the phase two because yeah, yeah. we use the phase two a lot, a lot on like, tour, right? especially on tour. But yeah. even when I just bowl, even on a house shot, I can use the phase two a lot. It's very mm -hmm. versatile, but we don't really have another option off it. And then we had the accident for a little while, yep. kind of got came out COVID time. So it was kind of a little awkward, but that ball was another option that was like a step up. Yeah. So we kind of had like three symmetrical balls and then yeah, we yeah. went back to having one and I just, I feel like this is like a, almost a combination of the Axiom and the Idol. Like it's like as strong as the Axiom, but kind of more of the shape of the Idol. Yeah. Whereas the okay. Axiom was really a control ball. The thing on the inside is something we haven't done in a while is, is you know, it's kind of our version, you know, Torque Sphere technology, which is um, having kind of like a power ball, but it's above the equator. It's not like, you know, like honestly, like we had like Wild Streak and we had, um, which was kind of more centered. Uh, that's mm -hmm. why that one got so high RG with the lower diff. This one's just above the equator, um, reminiscent back to like unhinged hysteria. Right. So it's something rotor grip we haven't really done a whole lot of with this, you know, this this ball on the inside. And so that was something you know I was talking to Alex and uh, Hank about. And I'm like, you know, we need to get something. You know, we, we need a lower G high diff in a yeah. HP3. Um, and so this was one of those things that kind of circled back to it, and it's kind of like, oh, this makes sense, and. You know, looking again, as we say, across our three brands, you know, because we've got, you know, we got phase two, we didn't have anything in our side. And then, you know, obviously we got like Zen Soul Zen and on the global yeah. side. So Zen we, Master was the only one. Zen Master, yeah, we yeah. needed something in that window. So that was really the target score here. This is kind of my standard first layout. I kind of do a five, five and a half inch pin and a, um, and a three inch buffer. It's kind of what I do for all the ball reviews on our channel. The three, three and a half buffer yeah. is like, for me anyway, is by far the most versatile. Okay. And um, stacking the balls off this is like pretty easy. Right. Like, so that's kind of what I do. With my second layout, um, this one's a little more extreme because we're really trying to show the difference. Right. Um, this is only a one inch buffer, five inch. We go with a little bit of a stronger pin, um, shorter buffer. What this tends to do for me is give me a ball that's going to, stand up a little harder, mm -hmm. but not really hook as much down the lane. Right, and, it, and, and I think the thing too is based on how you throw it, like we talked about that your favorite layout's a five and a half. Yeah. S stronger pin for you being five inches, you know, yeah. in the world of you know, most people, a strong pin's gonna be a four inch pin. Yeah, exactly. But you can't quite get to that spot because no. of the flare and what it does. As soon as you get less than that, you get to that one and a half or that one inch zone, or even zero, Yeah. you end up forcing the core to tumble forward. It doesn't, you don't get the big change of direction. And so it's a matter of the pin distance is going to create the flare, which for you, like you said, is a pin stronger. We're forcing it forward and you're not getting the change direction like you do out of the three inch yeah. buffer. I mean, so. the, the best way in my mind to explain it is when you go with those short buffers, the transition from when it starts to hook to when it finishes hooking is much shorter. Mm -hmm. Tradition in people's mind thinks that the higher you pin, the more it's going to skid. Not and necessarily. If there's oil there, yes because you get that quick transition. But Correct. if there's no oil there in the front part of the lane, it's a disaster. Correct. Like it gets super forward super quickly. The longer the buffer, the longer that transition is. The, yep. the transition is. Right. So like some people in their mind can feel like, well, that makes it look smoother. It really depends on which ball it is. The professional bowler um, industry standard, so to speak, is stronger is the earliest. It isn't the one that necessarily comes Change, the most changes balls. directions the most, right? So, like, if you're watching these two balls, this one's the strongest. It flares more. It picks up earlier, and it and it makes its transition faster. And it's, but it doesn't cover as many boards. Correct. This one for me is the weaker one because it skids more. It retains more energy, but it covers more boards. On the pattern that we were bowling on, mm -hmm. um, I felt you, you could really see how it was really easy for me to change kind of with my hand, what the reaction oh, yeah, did yeah. and how continuous this one was down the lane. Correct. This one, on the other hand, is more of a, uh, a shape that like, it's more of a tumbler is what right. I call it. Exactly. Um, so with this one inch buffer, five inch pin, um, stronger pin, shorter buffer, um, flares a little more yep. uh, for me. I tend to use this with like a kind of a shinier surface. Oh, okay. I feel like it kind of like the two things come together to give me a complementary shape to this rather than gotcha. such a big gap. Yeah, I mean, makes sense. yeah, it's one of those things like we talked about, you know, whenever you get to that shorter buffer, like I said, the one half inch or even like a zero, you get it, to like you said, tumble forward. Mm -hmm. That's really good if you're like trapping a lane like far, far out, like towards a gutter or something, yeah. you're really trying to keep it in front of you. Or like we talked about, you get to a spot where you get so far in, you get it to kind of face up in the spot where you want it to, where it doesn't like overshoot, you know, it's going to kind of flare, and it's going to kind of stand up and then it's going to tumble straight forward. One, one quick other thing that I like with this mm -hmm. is in some bowling centers, um, the big angle isn't good going through the pins. 
Correct. Um, Twister pins is a good example of yep. this. This kind of layout is really good on Twister pins mm -hmm. because you kind of want the ball going like forward more through the pins forward. rather than like driving through because you don't get as much deflection. And often how the ball goes through the pins is really what dictates score, not the misses that you can break. Correct. Correct.